the more you're in the gym, the more you know what you gotta work on. Right. So I know everybody say you gotta have a trainer. And I do have a trainer, but a lot of times you don't train me on purpose because mm-hmm. you like figure it out. So a lot of times I just go out there and be like, what don't I have? Right. What do I want? And so I just add it. All right, what's up, everybody? We got our first episode of the Chosen Ones TV. Um, welcome. We got my boy um, Diego Ledesma, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, from Wyoming. Um, senior. Well, not a senior anymore. He graduated, but uh, yeah. yeah, bro. I always thought, bro, you were one of the more skilled guards in the area, and um, I appreciated your games. Obviously, that's why I went to a lot of them. Um, you and Minolito, it's a, a crazy backcourt. Um, I always called you guys the um, the Dame and CJ of Grand. <laughs> I'll just yeah lethal backcourt, man. Um, y'all just really have it going on team, bro. And I appreciate it. Um, the grind that y'all put yourselves through to, to stand out in the area. So, um, yeah, man. So, Diego, 20 points per game, um, about three rebounds per game and two steals per game. Somehow you're still a free agent. I have no idea how, no idea why. Yeah. But, um, crazy times. Crazy, man. But you'll find a home, man. Eventually, you just got to keep running. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, man, crazy stats. Crazy year, bro. Wyoming. Did you guys expect to kind of have the success that you did this year? Yeah, coming into the season, we knew we were going to have a big year. Mm-hmm. But we, we also knew we were slept on, so yeah, we figured the more games we win, the more attention we'll bring. Right. Yeah. I ain't going to lie, I slept on y'all a little bit. <laughs> um, I knew y'all were going to be tough, but I didn't think y'all were going to be – damn, what was your record? Like – I had like two we losses, two losses. Two. We finished oh, overall twenty and two. Yeah. Okay. Um, the game I knew y'all were for real is the game I was at when y'all beat Hudsonville. Like it wasn't like it was like a like a nail biter. It was like y'all were in control the whole game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you know how good Hudsonville Hudsonville was this yeah, year. Yeah. Very, like, very good team. Yeah, very good team. So I was like, all right, well I mean they're they're for real this year. Um, and even that game, Minolito didn't play that well up to his standards, and y'all still found a way to win that game. Mm-hmm. So that's how yeah. that's how I knew you guys were, were straight. Um, so yeah, man, what were some of your favorite uh games of the year? Um, definitely in both times, you play Grandpa's Christian, those mm-hmm. are always big sold out games. Um, the Hudsonville game, Ben Harbor game, and I would say. The South Christian games are real good, too. Yeah. So I'm going to ask a question where everybody, all your fans are probably thinking, man, what happened in that Ben Harbor game, bro? Like, you guys, you had them, man. You had them. <laughs> it, it, it really just came down to free throws at the end of the game. Yep. And then we had some silly turnovers with probably, like, a minute and a half left. Mm-hmm. And they came down and just hit, I think, school bit a big three, yeah. like a minute left, and they had, like, two laps in a row, and they just took off in there. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think pr- pretty much for the most of the game, y'all had school been check pretty much of the game. Uh, we weren't playing playing that well, but he had some big shots at the end. Um, yeah, he definitely showed he definitely why did. why he's the player that he is, Mister Basketball. Yeah. So um, that was that was a. I mean, besides Grand Christian, I think I mean that was a game of the year, like in the city at least. Everybody was there, like. Yeah, I think they're turning people Ooh. away outside. Um, that, that that's what I heard like the day after after the game that they stopped letting people in. I was like, it's crazy. Yeah, so I think I showed up at like four thirty that day, and it was packed already. It was it was wild. So let's fast forward, man. Um, I know you guys had some big expectations, um, you know, for the playoffs and stuff like that. Um, so you had you guys played two district games, right? Yeah, we played that Monday against TK and then the Wednesday against East Catwood. Yeah, yeah. And y'all won both of those games. Um, yeah, pretty easily. Um, 
And then COVID hit literally like a couple of days later. Yeah. Um, That's I mean, Yeah, what was going through your mind? I mean, yeah. I was I was in disbelief for a while because I didn't really understand what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we all did. We was all just focused on playing game by game, trying to get as far as we can, make a, make a playoff run. Yeah. And we get, I think, day of the game. Go to the gym, come back from the gym. Coach, call everybody, say, our season's canceled. We was like, what? Yeah. We, got, we got a game later today. He was like, well, they're going to cancel this game. Hopefully, it gets rescheduled. And then we had to wait a while. And then it was canceled. But it was, I don't know, it was just, I don't know. I really, I really didn't have any words then. We don't have any words now. It was just like, dang. Yeah. Like, it took like that. <sighs> Crazy man, crazy. Especially um, cause y'all y'all had so much momentum going, you know. Um, even though you guys lost that that Ben Harbor game, I think you guys you showed that you could hang, you know, with some of the top teams in the state. Um, yeah. Would you would you agree? Yeah, I think after that game, even though I mean we were mad we lost, mm-hmm. but it was just one of those like we could have had it. Yeah, like it was. It wasn't because they just went and pounded us. We just didn't execute when we needed to. Right. And so we just we just looked at that and just got better and just won the next two games. Yeah. Um, speaking of that Ben Harbor game, there's that one play, Menelito, uh had that step back, hit that trade. Yeah. It, it kind of went viral. Um, what was the talk uh, in school about that play? I mean – Everybody was just going crazy. I mean, it went on overtime. Yeah. Everybody kept talking about it in the hall. But, like, as a team, we seen it every day. So, it was just, yeah. like, it was a step back and one. Like, that's right. what he does. Just but everybody, everybody didn't know that yet. So, <laughs> I mean, today was just a complete shot move. We, we already knew it was up. Right, right. Man, crazy. Um, travel or no? Definitely not. No. That was clean. Ball was in rotation. Mm-hmm. Feet moved quick enough. It was clean. Bro, that mug was so lethal, man. That, that was that move was out of control. Yeah, and it was just it just looked easy, man. Like it just looked real easy. Um, I don't know many cats that can pull that move off in a game like that. Um, I think that was in the fourth quarter too, was it, or was it third? I can't remember. I I, might, I think it was in third because that's when he got hot. I think he had yeah. like a few shots before that. Yeah, and he pulled the move off, but he practiced that move all the time. So, okay. it was just, it was just another move. To everybody else it was like, "Whoa, right, man, that was wild. That was wild." All right, let's continue on the COVID though. Um, keep talking about that. Uh, what have you been doing, um, as far as you know, working out, staying in shape? What types of things are you, are, are you doing this summer? I mean, I just been doing like three or four workouts every day, mm. you know, get a lot, get a lot of shots up, a lot of skill work in, and then hit the weight room. I try to get a little bigger because, you know, I'll be going playing the next level now. You got to yeah. do that anyways. Right. And then I've been running miles every few days, go to the field, run bleachers, do sprints, yeah. run stairs, run dunes, do a lot of all the work. Yeah. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Other than basketball, other than working out, I know you spend a lot of time at home. So what, what you been doing at the crib? Reading books, watching movies. What you been doing? I mean, I watch a lot of movies, but usually sometimes I get in the game with my friends. A lot of times I sleep. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. L- lately I've been watching that '70s show. I don't know why. I just <laughs> I like it. It's funny. Yeah. It's quick. I don't know. I just like. It. I, I like to watch a lot of old movies though, like Scarface and The Godfather. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, those two are probably my favorite. So, so, you got a favorite movie? The Godfather. Godfather? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Classic. Favorite one. Classic. So, yeah, tell me, just tell me a little bit about you, man. Your uh, your background, your story, your family, heritage, all that. What's, tell me about Diego. Yeah. Let people know. Probably my heritage. I'm a Puerto Rican and black. Puerto Rican on my mom's side, black on my dad's side. Okay. Um, I grew up mainly on my mom's side and everybody, I mean, everybody's nice, cool, caring. I had a few aunts and uncles who played high school basketball at uh, Wyoming Park. Mm-hmm. Then my mom was a cheerleader at Catholic Central. And that's why I ended up starting off 
my high school is at Kathy Central. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Freshman, sophomore year. Mm-hmm. Then it just it just wasn't really a right fit for me. So then I went to Wyoming after a lot of convincing. Mm-hmm. And then from there it just just took off. Yeah. That's what's up. So what did you wanna go to Wyoming because you you know your family had ties to Wyoming or was it something about you know, the basketball team or you had friends there already? I mean I grew up with those guys playing like football with them, playing basketball with them and against them. So to me, it was like home because yeah. I knew everybody that was there. Right. And then I think my first day that I met Coach Van Der Clay, mm-hmm. I mean, we've been cool ever since. So it just felt like the right move. Yeah. Cool, man. Speaking of Coach, coach Van Der Clay, uh, he was a coach when I was in high school. So I played at, uh, I played at Jensen and we, uh, mm-hmm. we always played park. They were parked back then, um, but the second game of the year. Um, always loved playing them because it was different. We were in OK Red, and OK Red was just a bunch of football players, beefy dudes running. I mean, scoring like 30, 40 points a game was just really slow in that conference. Mm-hmm. So, you know, playing for Coach uh, Vander Clay is just like running gun, running gun. Um, we were all we would always score like seventies, eighties. I used to love playing against Park. But um how'd you like playing in that offense? Obviously you benefited a lot scoring twenty a game. I mean it was at first it took some time to get used to mm-hmm. just the fact that go ahead and score. Yeah. Cause from C C we ran a lot of plays, a lot of sets, and I was used I was accustomed to that. So when you came here, I just got used to the role. But after I got used to it, it was just I mean, whatever move I worked on the day before, that's what I was doing in the game the next day. Right. So I think I think I, I liked it a lot. Yeah, that's what's up. So, yeah. y'all running and gunning like that, obviously you probably had to be in, in pretty good shape. Was that a big part of your your regimen? Like in practice and all that? Every day. Yeah. Every day. Running. You can't get out of it, so you just got to <laughs> do it. You're running every day. I said, how did he set it up? Did he, like, just y'all on the line? Or did y'all just like do drills and like I know when I was in college, we did we would do drills and then the loser would run stuff like that. How did he set up like that conditioning? I mean, it was like all that kind of mix. Like sometimes we'll come in and practice straight out of line, mm-hmm. straight out of class, straight out of line, just running. Yeah. And sometimes we'll do this thing called running gun, which is like our warm up, mm-hmm. which is continuous passing and shooting. We do competition drills with like certain teams, losers run. Yeah. Right? And then. Uh, I always like the practices where we would scrimmage situations, mm-hmm. but it would play like a full game. So that's okay. how we conditioned while playing. Right. That was always my favorite. Yeah. But I mean, running was just every day. Yeah, man. That's important, man. People look at how y'all play or like, I don't know, teams in the NBA, Golden State Warriors, um, all these other up tempo teams. They think it's fun to run and gun, but like the grind behind it, you know. When the lights aren't on. That's that's the hard part, man. Yeah, it's having to be in shape to be able to do that. Because if you're not in good shape and you're shooting a bunch of threes and running the floor all game long, it's not going. It's not going to be pretty, you know. So, yeah, that's what's up, man. Respect. Always had respect for Coach Brandon Clay, man. We always had to come ready uh, when I was in high school to play against Park. Um. So who who was the toughest player that you had to? Had to check this year, or really all through your high school. Besides Minolito, we talking games like practice and games, or either or like. It's in games. Somebody from another school that you know you had to, you know, bring it. <laughs> I'd probably say Buffkin, Cody Buffkin. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, like coming to the game, you knew what you was gonna get, mm-hmm. but you got to stop it. And he's so long and athletic. You just yeah. sometimes there's nothing you can do. You're you're right there. Yeah. Sometimes he's going to just dunk on you and just, you just have to keep on playing. <laughs> There's nothing you can really do about it. For real, man. For real. Um, yeah, go bust game. yeah. Obviously, I love his game, Kobe. And um, he's just so poised, man. Like, he just goes at his own pace. He controls. He controls the game. Like, has the ball in his hands at all times. Makes every decision. Sure. 95% of the time makes the right choice. Um for sure. So yeah, man. That's that's definitely. I mean, it. And when we played them, my game plan was to try to speed them up. Yeah. So some of the decisions he got to make quicker. 
Mm-hmm. And I think I think the second game we did that a lot better than the first game. Yeah, yeah. I heard that was a good game. I'm mad I missed that one. Um, but yeah, yeah, that was that that game. That was, that was a real fun game. Yeah, that's crazy. I could tell, man. Um, after that first game, that Christian, the way y'all played them, I could tell that you, you know, you could you could beat them, or you had a chance to beat them the next time. But um, I mean, the funny thing that game was we had like first half was like. One of our worst shooting halves probably all year. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't even bad shots. We just couldn't hit anything. Right. And I think well, Mario Parks saved us that game. He had 27, a mm-hmm. sneaky 27. Yeah. Without that, we, we would have got buried. And then second half, we came back. We started hitting a lot of our shots. And then we right. just fell by two. Yeah. That first half, that was brutal. Yeah. yeah y'all had a lot of, you know, X Factor dudes. Um, who was that kid, man, that was. He was on the JV team, dropped like, I don't know, 40, 50, and then he got moved uh, out finally. Uh, Ramir Draper? Yeah, okay. I heard a lot about him, man. I heard a lot about He's him. He's a bucket. Yeah. He's a bucket. Yeah. Look out for him. He's a bucket. All right. Yep. He's a bucket for sure. Right. Looking back, you know, I know everybody. I don't want to talk about, like, regret, you know. Uh, so back when I was in high school, um, if I had to go back, I would change two things. The first one was being in better shape, so taking care of my body a lot better. Um, so, you know, doing more running, probably should have, like, ran cross country or something just to, like, you know, stay in better shape. But number two, to be more aggressive, man, um, you know, I probably should have been more like Manolito and just, man, I have no shot that I don't like, bro. Just start gunning. Um, my dad was always on me. My, my 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 coaches were always on me, but I was just too unselfish. So those are the two things that I would like definitely change about my career if I if I went back. But what about you, man? What if you could look back, starting like from your freshman year or even earlier than that? What what are some things that you would have done differently on and off the court to help you, you know, be a better player? For one, I think I would have sent my film out earlier to colleges. Mm-hmm. And two, I, my, I would have started like freshman year doing three, four workouts a day. Okay. Because I didn't really start that to like my middle sophomore year. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if I would have started just coming out the gate freshman year, it could have improved a lot in the long run. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what do you guys say to the young young wolves out there, young cats, um, trying to be in your position? What does it stay take? Stay in the gym. Just stay in the gym. I mean, the more you're in the gym, the more you know what you got to work on. Right. So I know everybody say you got to have a trainer. And I do have a trainer, but a lot of times he don't train me on purpose because mm-hmm. you like, figure it out. So a lot yeah. of times I just go out there and be like, what don't I have? Right. And what do I want? Mm-hmm. And so I just add it. And you just keep on working on it, and pretty soon you're just doing it, and it all goes together. So you just got to stay in the gym. Yep, for sure, man. Um, yeah, I just want these young dudes, man, to to understand. Like, as you can see, I mean, it's hard, you know, getting to the next level and playing, right? Um, mm-hmm. I mean, you're gonna get there. I can guarantee that. But um, the work that you got to do, like, it's not just gonna come to you. You know, what I mean, you can't just. The only time you touch a basketball can't be during basketball season or yeah, for sure. For sure. It's got to be. If you do that, you might as well cancel out college yeah. basketball. Yeah, just give up. Especially today, like even when I was in high school, um, you know, a lot of us, you know, played multiple sports. Um, but kids these days are just playing basketball or just playing football. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So um, did you play any other sports or did you just play? I know you said you played football. Uh, but I played football in middle school. When I, when I got to high school, I just focused on basketball. Okay. Yeah. So I just, I just did it all year round. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, man, if you're young and you're watching, man, you know, take notes from from Diego and um, all the other players you see and just keep, you know, keep grinding, man. You got to do something every single day. Um, so, yeah, I want to close, man, just kind of talk about – you know, the state of our, our country right now. Uh, as you probably saw, you know, a lot of a lot of crazy stuff happening, you know, from, you know, innocent 
innocent people dying, black people dying, people of color dying. Um, and it seems like it's not going to stop anytime soon. I keep telling my friends that, man, it's going to be a long summer. It's going to be a long summer. But I just want to hear your thoughts, man, um, you know, on the police brutality that's going on um, and racism that's happening in your, in your country, even um, in our country, even in you had, have you ever, you know, dealt with racism yourself? Um, so I just want to get your thoughts and stuff like that. I mean, I always know it was here, but now, like, with social media and everything, you can actually see how it's happening. I think it's starting to wake a lot of people up. Mm-hmm. And it could be a positive thing. Yeah. That we're seeing is, but it's also a big negative thing because you never want to see one of your own get hurt. Right. But as far as it, if it's going to stop, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the way, the way the world works is crazy. Yeah. You know, it could, it could stop tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And everybody could be good or can keep going for 100 years. So you never really know. For sure. But as far as just people just being respectful to others, you know, listening to other stories and just being there for another, I think that can help a lot. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Uh, have you ever dealt with, you know, racism personally or anybody in your mm-hmm. family? I have, but it's more just like slick comments, whether it's yeah. like in a game. Just pick up games, just walking around. But the way I was raised, is just ignore it because right. they just want they they just want you to have it trigger you. But once they figure out they're not triggered, I mean, what can they really do? Yeah. So, so, uh, um. Yeah. Do you have like a a message to people out there? You know what what can we do? What can your white friends do? What can um you know white people in general do to to help make change? I mean, they, oh, man, that's a tough question. You know, I think just uh, come together. Mm-hmm. I mean, because you never, you're never really going to have peace until everybody's at one with each other. Right. Which can take very long. It'll be something that's hard to do, but it yeah. doesn't hurt to try. Definitely. So that's what I would say. Just become one with one another. Cool. Thanks for sharing, man. Appreciate you, Diego, uh, for taking some time to, to talk to me, man, um, and being the first person on uh, the Chosen Ones TV. Um, yeah, man, can't wait for this to be uh, dropped on social media. Uh, speaking of social media, where where can people find you? Twitter, Instagram, mm-hmm. Facebook. My Instagram is Dilo the Kid. Facebook Diego Desma, and Twitter is underscore D Nice Three. That's where I'll be at. Cool, man. All right, bro. Any, any closing remarks? Anything you want to say? Any shout outs? Shout out Wami Wolves, you know, <laughs> for, for, for a great season. You know, you just stay in the gym. Just want to say, man, congratulations on all your, uh, all your success, bro. Congratulations on graduating, too. Um, that's a big achievement, man. Um, yeah, bro, just keep grinding. Um, I've been talking to a couple coaches for you, so uh, hopefully, hopefully you hear somebody reach out. But, uh, yeah, man, just keep grinding, bro. I know it'll work out for you. I know you find a place that's perfect for you. Uh, just keep keep it up, all right? All right, appreciate it. All right.